Where's the morality? Where do you draw your morality? What does it mean to love people? It's miserable. If you hate people, why are you trying to keep them alive? Let's just be honest. There's no reason to help them, right? What's the benefit there to help them? At the end of the day, the nurse who does it for the money is going to try to get the money at the expense of the kind of care they give the patient. How is that different than the executives that we criticize? <laughs> I want you to think about that. This is the Nice Veins Bro podcast, the number one podcast for nurses who want to live that next level life. I am Nene Pablo, host of this podcast, registered nurse and creator of Nice Veins Bro. Love, 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 love. That is the topic for today. It's overused. It's overrated, especially in the English language. Could mean so many things. You could love Skittles and you could, you could love your grandparents. There's platonic love, there's brotherly love, there's family love, the sexual, romantic, and even worshipful, you know, to or towards a, a deity or whatever. Today's episode is going to be about how real nurses love life and love people. It's part of the, it's actually the last one of the five-part series on what it takes to be a real nurse. Um, I put together values and characteristics as to what I thought makes a real nurse, a distinction between the four million of us out there, and I made them into each separate episode. You should check out the others, but this is the last one. It's uh, respect the profession, put in the work, stay humble, practice what you preach, and love life and love people. So we're going to talk about what love is, we're going to talk about what it means to love life and what it means to love people. But first, I, I really want to set the stage. I want to lay the foundation of this and kind of get the gears rolling in your mind um, by asking some questions. The first is, is love quantifiable? Is this concept of love quantifiable? Can we measure it? And if so, how do you measure it? Also, does love always, at all times, without exception, generate change? or some sort of specific outcome? You know, what does it look like? Um, and then the third one is more specific to nurses and really um, healthcare providers or anyone in healthcare in general, and that is are we morally obligated or responsible to love our patients and their families? We're in this industry where we talk a lot about caring and you ask people, why did you get into nursing? It's, well, I just like to care for people, you know? Um, is, okay, then, then does that mean it is morally an obligation for us to love our patients and our families? We're gonna talk about this and a lot more. Don't go anywhere. Let go. No, 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 no. Hola mi gente, everybody has a crazy nursing story to tell. If you want to share yours with the world, send it to me. I'll feature it here on the podcast and you can get my take on it. You can also ask me questions, love questions. Remember, HIPAA rules do apply when you're telling your story, of course, and I will make sure you remain anonymous. I don't know what you're waiting for. Send me a message, nicevainsbro.com slash podcast. That's again, nicevainsbro.com slash podcast. Looking forward to it. We have all heard of uh, when people say love is love. Love is love. I get the intention people have or what they're trying to communicate when they say that. But honestly, love is love as a concept is, is stupid. I mean, it's 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 unhelpful and it's it's literally a circular definition. I mean, what's what's a nurse? Well, a nurse is a nurse. A nurse uh, is a nurse. A table is a table. A house is a house. What what does it mean? Define it. If you have a certain way that you like to define it, don't go looking for the definition. That's cheating. But comment below if you are looking on, uh, if you are watching this on YouTube. Comment below what you can muster up without looking at the dictionary. What is love? It's hard to define. It is hard to define, and um, if we try to loosely define what it is, because it's such a massive concept, um, I would say love is an affection that you feel and an action that you fulfill when you're looking out for someone or something. 
when you're you know watching out for the well-being of something or someone so both it's an it's an affection and it is an action it's it's an emotion and it's a behavior it's a combination of these two where you're giving attention and you're giving a response to you're not staying stagnant um and obviously there are different kinds of love but all of those kinds of love require those two things in my opinion and that again is the affection that you feel the emotion that you feel that's the good feeling fuzziness that you have and then there is the work that goes into it which you do something about those feelings now the bible has a definition or i guess it's almost like a description of what love is uh, found in 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, most of us in the Christian world call this the love chapter, and it describes love, one of my favorites uh, way of describing love. It is. It says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it does. it is not proud. We talked about humility a few episodes ago. It says, it does not dishonor others, dishonor, wow. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Some powerful stuff, dude. (laughs) Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. It continues saying it always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes, always perseveres. And it finishes with love never fails. As for all my Christians out there, Bible talks about love. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. God is love, in fact, it says, multiple times. And whether you're Christian or not, I think that it's fair to agree um, that there is a spiritual component to love or loving. And interestingly enough, in the ancient text in the Bible, it actually also categorizes love in several different ways. You've got the romantic love, um, and that's in the Greek called eros, and I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but then you also have the fraternal love that we talked about or that it categorizes in, and that in the Greek is phileo love. And then there's this third kind of love that the Bible also describes called agape, agape love. And what does agape mean? Really agape, when the Bible talks about agape love, it is profound, like sacrificial, unconditional love. It's so sacrificial and deep that this is the exact word that it uses, that the Bible uses in the famous text John 3, 16, that you may recognize, where it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So it, it literally says, for God so agape the world. I mean, he unconditionally, profoundly, not depending on what we did, he just loved us so much that he gives his son to die for our sins and whatnot. So, this is like a like a divine kind of love. And if the Bible says that God is love and God is divine, there is a spiritual divine kind of love there, right? So that's the way that the Bible has described the different kinds of love. Romantic, eros, fraternal, phileo, and agape, which is that unconditional, sacrificial love love. So going back to the concept of nursing and how I said that real nurses love life and love people, um, I think we've just scratched the surface really of what love is. And it's very, I think love, we will probably never have a full understanding of what love is. If the Bible itself says that God is love, we can't even understand God fully. So how do we expect to understand fully what love is? But this concept is obviously important and it obviously drives, uh, is, is a lot of the driving factor of what the principles are of nursing and humanitarianism. So as, as nurses, you know, it's important to ask, what does it mean to love life and then love people? What does it mean to have this concept that could help me be the best nurse that I can be? As a nurse, what does it mean to love life and love people? It is a very, very important question to ask. Uh, 1 
first, let's cover life. What does it mean to love life? Um, this is what we deal with day in and day out. I mean, the whole the whole concept of nursing ha- surrounds life, surrounds the gift and the beauty of life. Um, I want to get the obvious out of the way. I mean, the very essence of nursing is to care for the lives of our patients. You know, some of us got <laughs> into nursing for the right reasons, and I know for a fact that we didn't do it for the pizza. We didn't do it for the little sign that they put outside of hospitals and nursing homes. The heroes work here. It was more than money. It was more than opportunity. It was more than to prove something or to make our parents proud or something. We did it for more than that recognition, right? I hope we did. I know sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I wonder if people just went into nursing to wear jogger scrubs. But at the end of the day, uh, our The focus of nursing is humanitarian. It absolutely is humanitarian. It's promoting human life. Um, But have you ever sat and wondered why? Like, what is the reason? Why do we do what we do as a profession? Not just, you know, why you're a nurse. Why do we do what we do as a profession? You know, what is, there is a humanitarian reason behind it. It's like this moral obligation that we have. At the end of the day, The focus of nursing and health care in general, I'm not talking about the system, I'm talking about the idea or the fundamentals. The whole idea, the focus is humanitarian, you know, promoting human life, protecting human life. Um, And the whole basis of that, the reasoning behind that is love, it, love is what requires the response from us. We talked about action. What draws us to make action is that love that we have innately for the welfare of others. And, you know, as a Christian, I would say that that's based in what God has sort of created us to have this desire for the goodness and the welfare of the life of others. Love requires that change and that response. True love does, at least. The historical foundation of healthcare, at least in the United States, um, you know, when you look back, it was it was Christian organizations, it was religious organizations that were leading the cause when it was in hospital. That's why all these hospitals have a cross somewhere, at least even in the basement. They have a cross. Okay. I'm not saying that that's the way that they function now, unfortunately. Business, bad business, I'll say, um, gets in the way, of course. And then the focus is no man, you know, no longer in the humanitarian side of it. But the whole reason why this, this is a thing, why do you think uh, it's the Catholics or the Baptists or the Methodists or the Adventists you know, that have these massive hospitals and all this stuff um, at least by name, um, it's because when you go back to the roots, I'm not saying now, I'm saying when you go back to the roots, it was based on taking action for somebody else. And it's because there is this love of life. The American Nurses Association have this thing called the Nursing Scope and Standards of Practice. Um, and it basically essentially describes the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and how of nursing practice. And the what, uh, on their website, the what says, nursing is the protection, the promotion, and the optimization of health and abilities, prevention of illness and injury, facilitation of healing, alleviation of suffering through the diagnosis and treatment of human response and advocacy in the care of individuals, families, groups, communities, and populations. I mean, check that out. You cannot have that desire from the depths of your heart without at least a drop of love. As nurses, we've got to love life. We've got to love it enough to protect it, to promote it, to 
optimize it in, for its best condition to prevent illness and injury, facilitate healing, the advocacy in care of individuals and families, groups, communities, and populations. How on earth can you do that without love? There's, there's no way. There's no way. That is the whole basis. It, it basically hangs or the foundation of all of that of nursing is love, is care for life and, the, and people, which we'll get to in just a second. But life itself is sacred. We've got to love life. This is why it's really important to talk about things, very sensitive topics, by the way, but things like abortion, things like euthanasia, uh, that you know sometimes people don't really want to talk about or they want to kind of you know hide under the rug. No, 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 let's pull it out. Let's talk about the why behind this. Let's talk about the way that we feel about this. Let's talk about the 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 hard facts about this and the truth and the situation because if we're dealing with life, we should have answers on these things because it pertains to life. It pertains to the very thing that we are protecting, promoting, and, uh, and optimizing. So I'm not going to get into those things maybe in a later episode, but this is why it's important to face those topics and confront them with, with a willingness to learn and, and to obviously be respectful, but to have dialogue about them because this is super important i mean if we're supposed to love life you know don't don't you think we should have a good grip on this don't you think we should have great dialogue in this abortion deals with life euthanasia deals with life and every other topic i mean many many topics if we love life we got to be willing to talk about some really tough stuff and not just get busy with our work but also why we do that work that's where this comes super duper important. So let's be prudent. Let's be wise about how, you know, who we align ourselves with, the hospitals and clinics. Let's make sure that we are aligning ourselves with people who are also loving life and loving people. This is what it means to love life. It's to take action to protect and promote it and to enhance it and to optimize it. Okay, that is what it means. Now, what does it mean to love people specifically? Well, we talked about loving life, but what does it mean to love people? Our, nor our nurses, wow, that's weird. Are nurses morally obligated, I asked earlier, to love patients and their family. Are, are we obligated to love people? Well, first of all, I can't imagine you promoting life and loving life or being a nurse and hating people. You can tell between the two nurses, the, the one nurse who does it for the love of people and the other one who's interested in just the money or paying the bills or they just have to do it because it's their job. I don't know if you've seen this meme and you know I don't wanna be the person who gets triggered by a meme, that's stupid, but there is a meme out there that says something along the lines of, oh, you know, healthcare was a very convenient way to find out that I hated people. Like, okay. I think when you really think about it, that is a really awful way to approach nursing. Um, it, it's miserable. If you hate people, why are you trying to keep them alive? Let's just be honest, right? There are two things. When it comes to that question, are nurses morally obligated to love patients? The first is it depends on your moral compass. If are, are you morally obligated? Well, what is your moral compass? Where do you draw your morals from? Do you just make them out of thin air? Are you just coming up with your own morals out of, you know, <laughs> depending on how you feel? It's all right. Okay. I want to challenge you on that to think about that because whatever wherever you draw your morals from is going to dictate who how when where why to love at the end of the day the nurse who does it for the money is going to try to get the money at the expense of the kind of care they give the patient which i would say you know how is that different than the executives that we criticize mm. <laughs> i should have think about that what does it mean to love people what does it mean to love people now, it's super easy to love people who are lovable. 
super easy. Um, but what happens when they are not lovable? There's no reason to help them, right? What's the benefit there to help them in an evolutionary standpoint? Where's the morality? Where do you draw your morality? But in a Christian standpoint, this is for all the Christians out there, as a Christian, we are not called to just love the lovable. That's where the difference comes in. As a Christian, we are called to love with the agape love, the love that Christ showed the earth when coming to die for our sins. I mean, this is what this is what Paul describes when he's actually talking about, you know, love is kind, love is patient, all this stuff, you know, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor, dishonor others, it is not self-seeking. When it talks about that, it's talking about agape love. And so this is, as Christians, what we're called to do. We are not called to just love the people who don't hit the call bell. We're called to love the people who give us a hard time on our 12-hour shift. We're called to love the people who slap us. We're called to love the people who curse us out. We're called to love the people who challenge our knowledge on medications that we give. We're called to love them, to care for them. This is the difference, I think, when it comes to a Christian perspective and one that is not. It's difficult for me, uh, bear with me, to separate, you know, the concept of love and my beliefs in, you know, my belief in God. Just hear me out. If, if you have no moral compass, if you're coming from an evolutionary standpoint, survival of the fittest or whatever, you are called in that worldview to have self at the center and you only help those who in turn will help you. But at, for a Christian listening, for the Christians listening, we're not called to love the people who are gonna have the best outcomes. We're called to have agape love, to love like that, to love like that requires, in my opinion, a divine power, a spiritual power, namely God, Jesus Christ. Love your enemies. When, when the Bible says, pray for those who persecute you, when it says, love your neighbor as yourself, when, when it says, love one another as I have loved you, that is a call for us to love others with that agape love. You wanna talk about something that is very, very high standards, high expectation. I mean, Jesus is saying, love others the way that I loved you. Oh, and by the way, I gave my entire life for you. I poured myself out, knowing that you having free will could choose to reject me. So not to get all preachy, but that is what Christians specifically are called to do. That is the reason why there is a why behind nursing. That is the kind of approach that real nurses, when I talk about love life, love people, real nurses have that understanding. And more importantly, Christian nurses. If you claim to be Christian, even more so on you. I mean, the expectation is there from the, directly from the throne of God. God says, this is what I have done for you, do so for others. So it's a high expectation. That innate desire for the welfare of others is a spiritual, it's a spiritual gift. It's a, it's a, it's something that God instills in us, whether you acknowledge him or not, low key. And it is a responsibility that we have. And I think the people who take it seriously about loving others and loving life and promoting it and all this stuff, you know, we could have it on the a a website all you want, but until you actually live it out, that's when it actually changes people's lives. So let's actually take what the ANA says, nursing is the protection, the promotion, optimization of health and abilities, prevention of illness and injury, facilitation of healing, alleviation of suffering through the diagnosis of treatment of human response, and advocacy in the care of individuals, families, groups, communities, and populations. Look at that through the lens of love. How can you do that without a strong why? Hey, I just want to thank you for listening. It means the world to me, especially because at the time of this recording, I'm still only a couple months from starting this whole thing. So if you're interested in helping me build this brand even more, 
please share this podcast on your social media and grab some merch from the website at niceveinsbro.com. Got some great stuff there for sale. Send me a DM on Instagram and share some encouragement, some love and some hate. I will welcome that too, but don't be shy. Talk to you soon. My favorite thing about nursing is probably this this word advocacy. Um, to me, this is what Jesus invites us to do for one another, um, to advocate for one another. It's the desire that I see in people who, you know, claim to be Christian, the people who don't even you know know Christ. They still have this innate desire, which I I feel like is a the desire that the Holy Spirit puts inspires inside of us is to be a voice for the people who are vulnerable, is to represent others when they have no voice. To me, this is what Jesus invites us to do for one another. The people who say they're Christian, the people who, you know, don't want anything to do with Christianity, this spiritual gift, you know, in my opinion, is the Holy Spirit moving in people's hearts to to love other people to be an advocate. After all, I mean, he is the greatest advocate. Uh, He is the realest nurse. (laughs) He loved people so much that he was willing to give and pour himself out. He stands before the Father and advocates for us uh, with his perfect life. And so what greater example do we have? What greater example do we have than Jesus Christ? This concludes the five-part series on what it takes to be a real nurse rising above the four million nurses out there. So the five things on my list of values and characteristics of those kinds of nurses is respect the profession, put in the work, stay humble, practice what you preach, love life, and love people. My friend, I want to ask this one more time for this series, and it is what kind of nurse do you want to be? And more importantly, what kind of person do you want to be? As always, thank you so much for listening. Que Dios me los bendiga. When I would listen to podcasts before I became a podcaster myself, I didn't realize how much leaving a five-star review helped. And so now on this side, I just want you to know that it really does mean a whole lot when people review and share the content So if you enjoyed it, please share it with somebody and leave a five-star review on whichever platform you use, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, et cetera. And if you're interested, you can also find us on social media at NiceVeinsBro or shop online at NiceVeinsBro.com. My personal stuff you can find under Nene Pablo, which is spelled N-E-N-E. P-A-B-L-O. I spend most of my time on YouTube making vlogs and videos and on Instagram. So I would love to connect with you. And remember, be a positive force and influence within healthcare and society. It's all about God, wellness, and purpose here. Thank you for listening. <laughs>